Yeah, hi YouTube, it's Michael. I promised you updates on my latest relay card project. And this is the update. What I've done so far is I've got the real-time clock working as to I can set the time and I can also read it out. And what I do is I display the time on my LCD display on this one. So this this reads uh, eight and uh, eight zero nine hours um, p.m. Well, I only have three and a half digits, so the first digit on this display can only be either nothing or or a one. It's, uh, I didn't have any more segments on the display. That is uh, unfortunately because the display isn't multiplexed. It's a standard L LCD display with only one com panel. So that's all I could do. So it actually took me quite a while to get the LCD display working just right because, um, yeah, you know, uh, this is uh, it's, it's rather complicated. Uh, writing the LCD driver it took me about just about two hour, uh, two days to to get it done just right. And then is the, the next problem I have is the real-time clock alarm settings. Um, what you can do with this real-time clock is uh, define alarms. Say, in this case, I just want an alarm once every second um, on an interrupt line on the AVR. So I can use this interrupt to update the actual clock. And this, uh, what I did now is, let's show in the code. Show us the code. Yeah, right. It's not done yet. So this time I just do a neat li uh, little trick. I get the real uh, uh, time clock data. I display the time, and I do this twice a second. And this is the endless loop. Uh, um, the controller is currently. You know, obviously, this is not the way to do it in the real system and then the finished system but it's a way to test it all right and this would be the code to use um, yeah to, to uh, enable the alarms if it just would work and the driver is I adapted a driver two things I converted it uh, ported it from C++ to C and used just an, used another way of controlling the uh, A square C interface with the USI, this universal serial interface from Atmel. And as you can see the code for the real-time clock, this is the code for real-time clock. It's quite a bit. All in all, more than 400 lines of code. And this excludes the UZ driver. So, the project so far has almost Let's check this out now. There's almost um, three kilobytes on the AVR. 3.5 kilobytes from 16 kilobytes. Just by using the real-time clock, there's no communication layer on that yet. And no advanced program functionality. It's just about the clock and the display and this uses up 3.5 kilobytes of code so you can imagine that this is rather complicated and this is why it took me so long it still takes me um, yeah next step is and I try to get this measly interrupt working so the AVR and the clock is always in sync and I can do an update once a second via an external interrupt then update um, of course the displayed time and not just that I want to check all the timers that I have defined on my card to actually switch the relays say if I have um, two timers active for this relay uh, I need to check it every second and also I need to display the time and if I want to do this quite right I need this external interrupt everything else would be pulling would be out of sync I could be done but I just want to do it with this external interrupt. Um, ah, let's show you one more thing. Switch it off. I mean, what the, f what the catch about this real-time clock is, I can 
take the power away. Well, this will blank. This should be the well, the, the, the interrupt signal, which is unfortunately not there. And now I switch power back on again. Uh, this. And what you can see is time is still there because the clock keeps on running this is not because of all the uh, stuff that is connected here that is because of this super cap and this keeps the clock running for for a number of hours once you switch the, um, the power off to this card so it keeps its time and it has its time independently yeah so next step will be get the interrupt working finish the clock stuff and then I guess it's time to either start um, the alarming code not the alarming code I mean the uh, yeah the timer code from for my part of the system and after that the communication layer and the PC software but this comes at a later point of time so still a lot of work to be done yeah that's it for the update thanks for your comments some of you guys have written me some messages um, I didn't get around to, to answer it yet uh, some of the stuff um, is a, a little far out. I mean, as to whole projects and uh, and stuff. <clears throat> yeah, but I, I, I see what I can do about this. So, I, I had one more problem that is worth mentioning that took me quite a while to to figure out, because the at first the real time clock didn't work at all. And after I began measuring the stop off and comparing uh, comparing the pins with the data sheet. I figured out that the library part I had in Eagle, this is the CAD software I used to design the board, had the wrong pin assignment. So um, the SCL clock line for the two-way interface and the data line were, yeah, they were assigned wrongly. They were, it was exchanged with one of the interrupt lines, and this is why the thing didn't work at all. Yeah, I was wondering why this crap didn't work until I figured out, um, yeah, it's. It's wrong. It's the wrong pin, pin assignment. So this is why I had to do a little patch line. Uh, yeah, and bad thing I had to ruin my my PCBs like that. But this is what happens sometimes, especially if the circuit isn't proven. Yeah, that's it so far. See you soon, and have a lot of fun.